We're Team, team Ponezilla. Hi, we're Team Ponezilla, and we're here today to present to you our prototype for a nebulizer. There are three major systems of this nebulizer. There's the motor, there's the nozzle, and there's the various mouth or face pieces that attach to the nozzle. I'm going to talk, be talking about the uh, motor section. What we have is instead of powering it by an electric motor, which is costly and breaks easily, we're powering it with CO2 gas, which is readily available in the developing world. The pressurized CO2 gas is fed into this motor system with a gunner on the board. The CO2 feeds into an air motor, which turns, turning the shaft attached to a pump. The pump moves up and down, generating oxygen, which moves the reason we even have to be flowing through the nozzle, we can't have CO2 flowing through the nozzle. The tubes connecting the nozzle to the motor are detachable, although they aren't in this model. Uh, and Levena, who's up next, will be talking about the nozzle subsystem. Go, oh, go. So this is a nozzle to the nebulizer, and it works just the same way as the traditional nebulizer. So changes. Um, I'll first explain and go through and tell you what's different along the way. So you would actually pour the medicine into the cup, and as you can see inside, there's actually the centerpiece, and theoretically it'd be removable. However, in this uh, SketchUp model, it's not just simply because of the way we had to tape it. So like, it would be removable, and then there would be another piece that would actually allow the air to flow through. And you would have actually the cap to it, which would snap in place, and a tight seal. And attached to this cap and actually connected to it is a, piece, a small segment of tube that would lead to a longer tube and then lead to uh, the lead out for a uh, Okay. And I'll explain more about how this nozzle works. Go. As you can see here, the tip here, allowing it to have very high velocity. And also, the liquid and the medication will flow out between the center piece and the original spindle nozzle itself. And then it will create a mixing effect with the gas to aerosolize it. And this will be pushed through the top of the centerpiece, which is actually um, the design ch change here is that we removed the spokes that were previously on it. And instead, it's being kept in place because of the pressure of the lack of distance applied between the, the connector piece and the tip of the nozzle. And this connector piece is a funnel shape that it is the tip here is actually smaller than the tip here. So then this will allow the fluid to flow through and then expand outward, where it enters this valve and allows for um, um, the further design of the valve and the mouth. All right, so Lavina was talking about uh, this part uh, that's uh, detachable. And then, so after uh, the medication gets mixed, um, right here, it's going to come up through uh, this channel into this tube and then actually and then eventually you either have a mouthpiece that connects to the end of the tube or you can have a mask and then just the patient's mouth would uh, end up right here and then kind of be uh, look like this. So to try to prevent infection we put a little a one-way valve uh, about right here in the tube about three inches away from where the mouthpiece or the mask would attach. So the way the one-way valve works is um, it would allow the medicine to come up through this tube and then into uh, towards the mask or the mouthpiece. However, if sometimes when the patient's using it, they will cough back into the tube. And this valve will prevent anything that comes from the patient's body. Uh, it will prevent that those particles from going back down into the tube and contaminating the tube. So this, we hope, will decrease the rate of infection for people using it. Um, the reason, well, before 
uh, the standard treatment was to uh, use a mask and have the patients apply the mask to their face. Um, a lot of children didn't like this because it was uncomfortable for them, so we decided to um, to use a mouthpiece instead. Because uh, what we did found was that a lot of children would, instead of using the mask, they would actually put the tube directly to their mouth and try to breathe it in that way. So that was um, one cause for an infection among different patients was because it would get contaminated from other people's uh, other people's germs. So we created this mouthpiece that will attach to the end of the tube, and then this is this mouthpiece can be cleaned in between each patient, so that will help with uh, controlling infection. And it's also a great distance away from the filter. The filter would be right here. So the end of the, from the end of the mouthpiece to the filter, there's about three inches of tubing. So um, that's also meant to help decrease infection. And that's pretty much it.